I'm sure as well you were all over the last dance. I mean, I was playing oh. bas- basketball at high school in the 80s was my gig. Through the through the early 90s, I was I was playing socially, mm-hmm. but sort of, you know, up to sort of second grade around Auckland uh, basketball and stuff. And and yeah. I've still got. In fact, if you go on my um, Instagram feed, go back a few months, you'll see my kind of 45 Shaquille O'Neal basketball cards from the early 90s, all still pristine. It was it was my era for playing and watching. And it yeah. just made me think when you were talking about greatness. I um I put a tweet out. I was watching episode eight, uh, obviously on Monday night, like anyone who's interested in it does straight away. And a uh, quote from Michael Jordan. I'm reading it off my phone because I tweeted out. This is what Michael Jordan said talking about competing, you know. He goes, when people see this, they're going to say, well, he wasn't really a nice guy. He may have been a tyrant. Well, that's you because you never won anything. <laughs> and I'm like, when I heard him say that, I was like, holy crap. That I, Okay. I mean, for all the all the stories about you know him having fights mm-hmm. with his his, his um, teammates and that. But when he said that, when he basically goes, other people see me as a tyrant, the reason you see me as a tyrant is you never won anything. I won everything, you never won anything. And and just it's, seeing that story it's again, am- it's been amazing. It's been, it's been an amazing documentary. I know we've still got a couple more episodes to go, but geez, it's brilliant storytelling. Yeah. Um, just absolutely majestic. But yeah, I mean, Michael Jordan just pulls no punches. And, that's, and I, I've enjoyed it and... I think it was like a lot of people, and there was a lot of preamble, obviously, to the start of that last dance, and you would have read a bucket load of it as well. Yeah. You know, what are, what are we going to think? And Michael Jordan sitting there saying, you know, I, well, I, I really don't care what you think effectively. But it's been extraordinary that, you know, um, what a, the guy carries, a, he carries some serious grudges and yeah. how he used that. Oh, that's what I, I'm fascinated by because... A lot of that stuff to me is quite deeply negative. How he takes things that are so incredibly negative and he has spun it around and turned it into this fuel that I would have thought would have been quite debilitating at times to be motivated like that so consistently. But, I mean, you, you can't argue with the finished product, but it's been, it's been brilliant storytelling and... Um, the, everything, the way they jump backwards and forwards in yeah. time, and you know, I thought first time I thought, oh, okay, they're going back, but it just makes perfect sense, yep. and it just flows beautifully. It's it's a, it's a remarkable piece of storytelling. It yep. really is brilliant. And if if people weren't like me, I mean, I'm I, me and my my mates in the early nineties were basketball every day. When I was fourteen, my parents built me a basketball um, basketball hoop on the roof of the garage. That was my fourteenth birthday present. And so right nice. through then to the to, to like mid twenties, that's that's all my life was, um, and so that was I me. Mean, my mid twenties was kind of mid to late nineties. So that really is the 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 prime time they're talking yep. about for this. I remember I remember that baseline dunk he does over Patrick Ewing uh, in that Eastern Conference final. I was with two of my mates sitting in a bar in Queen Street. <laughs> I can remember watching it, and when that dunk happened, my one of my mates Paul just screamed and ran out onto Queen Street screaming. Like, I can remember it. The same one where they blocked Charles Oakley four times. I can re- I can remember those games. Yeah. I know it's funny. You think about it, Nige, and you go, when I was a teenager, or when I was in my 20s, mm-hmm. it was like hearing those old duffers talking about Don Clark. That's me now talking about Michael Jordan. You know? Yeah. It's like those guys talking about Don Clark. And, and when we age, like, I still reference often Eminem. Now, Eminem was getting close to 20 years ago now, and one day Eminem will play on fucking coast because that's yeah. what happens. And it's, it's a crazy, crazy thought to think about getting older and reminiscing. But if you want to reminisce, The Last Dance is a pretty awesome yeah. way to do it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, I'm, see, I, I came into basketball. I was a little different. See, my, I'm a Utah Jazz fan because I love John I, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Hey, 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 watch it. <laughs> By the way, Brian Russell pushed, he, Jordan pushed off. Let me get that in there straight away <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, I, so I watched John Stockton because um, at the time I started playing basketball, when I went to high school, um, ran about the same height as what John Stockton was. I was um, a little bit shorter and I grew to be about the same height as him. Yeah. Wore number 12. And I'm watching him and I'm like, hey, here's this, here's this little, little white fella. I don't take that the wrong way, but it was just, the way that it worked at that time. It's like, here's a sort of white fella playing amongst these just these giants, mm. and yet he's still able to survive. And that's what drew me into basketball. It's like, okay, you can be 
uh, shorter, you can have something different. You can pass the ball, you can be a shooter, you don't yep. have to be this big guy who can jump and, and dunk and that sort of thing. And that's what that's what drew me into it. But that's what I mean, that's what was fascinating about Jordan is Jordan could beat you every conceivable way yep. that you wanted. If he had to be a facilitator, which he ended up being at times, he could facilitate. He could just say, right, I'm taking over the game and just drop 25 and a quarter on you if he wanted to. He could shut your best player down defensively. Um, he could get in your head. He could get at you physically after he went through those trials and tribulations with the Detroit Pistons. Just an extraordinary package. And watching this, if anyone ever questions who the greatest basketball player of all time is in terms of just the athletic ability, mental yeah. toughness, fortitude, the whole thing, you know, this hopefully puts that conversation to bed because, yes, there are some amazing players that have followed, two in particular in Kobe and LeBron, but this, to me, irrespective of what you think watching this guy and maybe some of the conceived or perceived pettiness, that's the greatest of all time. Yeah. That's the GOAT right there that we're watching. It's yeah, not well, a debate anymore, in my opinion. Uh, the only debate that people can put up, I think, is is maybe maybe LeBron, and I don't agree with it, but because he made, what was it, seven or eight finals in a row? But if you actually mm-hmm. take out that half year that Jordan came back, Jordan actually made six finals in a row and won them all. You know, if you take out that the year of um, baseball and that half year he came back, you know, you give him credit for that. So he basically won six in a row of full seasons. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's it's because a lot of guys did a lot of good things. A lot of guys won a lot of championships, but no one had the whole package: the the, the defensive player, the scoring championship, and the rings. You know, that, and that's that's, that's how you do it. I mean, I remember seeing a meme once before memes were memes, perhaps. In the early days of this conversation, they probably weren't called memes, and the conversation was around uh, Jordan and Kobe, and all the person did was Photoshop accurately all the trophies that each of them had won, and you know I think Kobe got five rings in the end, but if you look at all the other ones, defensive player scoring, all those kind, of, Jordan had like four times as many trophies, and it's like you know you don't really count the All Star MVP that sort of thing, but Finals MVP you do, scoring champion you do, defensive player first team, and there was significantly more accolades in the Jordan pile than there was in the Kobe pile, which I think they were saying even then conversation over. Yeah, you, you, you think so, but as I said, I mean just oh story I, I you, you just, they just drop and you just eat them up on a monday and then it's a bloody long wait for the next two to drop yep i'm um i'm so, i always it's always a late one on monday night and the other thing that's been <laughs> interesting talking about the kids the two older ones i've got so you know going 14 and 16 they've watched two episodes with me and as you said i've actually contacted the director and i'm hoping like anything that i can get him on um we've Ooh. we've chatted a bit um, but, you know, obviously he's going on ESPN, so why the hell would he come into my bedroom? Um, <laughs> um, but, why, but why, mate, you, you, you ask. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Ask and, yeah, fingers crossed for you, fella. But the storytelling is so good that they're into it and they want to see the next one and they want to see the next one. So I'm probably go back and, you know, after we've done the three Austin Powers now, <laughs> Austin Powers 2 will be tomorrow, <laughs> we'll go back and, and I'll watch it again with them from the start because... I know I, it sounds really arrogant, but I know if I'm enjoying it, everyone will, because I've seen all this footage a thousand times before, because that's where I was in. But then there's also hours of footage that I've never seen before. And I know not yeah. because I'm anything special, but because I was such a uber basketball fan, not just Bulls fan, but basketball fan, um, that if I haven't seen it, no one has. So that's the other thing about it. I'm looking forward to going back and seeing that. Some of those practice footages, uh, you know, showing him being an absolute... I was thinking... I think I wonder if a lot of people would hate to have Jordan as a friend, but would love to have him as a teammate. He drives you so hard to help you win the championship, but he does come well, off like a bit of a dick half the time. Yeah, but I mean, I thought Steve Kerr touched on that. Uh, I think it was that last episode when they talked about that scrap that they got into, and about how Jordan really respected Steve Kerr for for standing up for himself and, and throwing yeah. one back, and then obviously Jordan punched him in the head, and then Jordan <laughs> sitting there, Jordan sitting there later on going, "Oh my man, I just, I just smacked the smallest guy yeah. in the team in the head and got kicked out of practice and caught him up and apologised." But you know, it's 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 those things for me. I mean, that yeah, you know, that really summed up. You know, Kerr talking about. I thought that the when they brought in Scott Burrell and talking about Scott being such a nice guy and the way that. Jordan was really hounding on him, saying, yeah. you know, trying to get him to be to that level because we're going to need you at some point. And then they cut to that game where Burrell drops, I think, 23, 24. 
and you know and plays his role in getting them to another title i mean it's it is, it's brilliant brilliant storytelling yeah. just outstanding storytelling and it's just compelling whether you love basketball it's such a it is such an interesting human story. Well, that's it. It really does drag you in. That's it. I think it's the humanistic side of it, and I think his personality is interesting because I don't agree with him that you have to be a tyrant to win, which is sort of what that quote is that I read out. Because just going back yeah. to our original conversation, Usain Bolt seems to be the nicest guy in the world all the time, but he doesn't operate that way. But for, for Jordan, and it just goes to show as well how brilliant Phil Jackson was at being the Zen master, because if you had a hot head coach, and let's be honest, in practice a hot head player, uh, and, and that might be an unfair term to use for Jordan, but, you know, a, a aggressive, pushy player to get the other players to be better, it wouldn't have worked. But to have the Zen master on one side and the sort of aggression coming from your captain, it's, it's it was the perfect match, you know? Yeah. Um, and we, we can sit here and just you just look at the results. Um, and then it's, it's interesting because if you keep going with Phil's career and you look at some of those quotes like that episode when they were talking with Kobe, and Kobe made the comment, you know, everything you see with me is because of Michael. Yep. And then you start to understand why that relationship worked so well, um, too. So, yeah, obviously, Phil's, had, Phil's probably saying, okay, I've, I've seen this before. I, yeah. I, I've, seen, I've seen this movie, you know, six times. Yeah. Um, it's, this is seven, eight, nine. And yeah, I mean, it, it, he's he's a really – this is what, there's so many different – it's the personalities as well. There's such stark – contrasts in terms of the personalities obviously you got michael as your absolute alpha dog and then you do have you know phil you know very zen like very mellow scotty who at you know at times you know could 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 flick a, a button as well as we're showing you know with that one where he got the pip about not getting the final yeah uh, final shot shucks um and, and jordan knowing straight away that that was going to happen and then you know winnington uh you know the only time you hear from cartwright was when he's talking about how he broke down in tears after that incident and was getting into Scotty Pippen. I mean, just amazing characters. Yeah, they, they, yeah storytelling, brilliant characters, brilliantly presented and, and told. It it really is, um, in addition to being just so captivating from the subject matter in, in terms of, and I'm no expert in this, but just in terms of storytelling and the way it's shown, the soundtrack is off the chart. The soundtrack's so good. Yep. The music, um, it, everything. It's just, to this point, I hope I'm not jinxing it, but to this point, <laughs> after it's just been flawless. Oh, it's it, just been magic. It'll, t- it'll, it'll run away at the Emmys. Whatever it goes up for, it'll win. It'll be great anyway.